Well, y'all, all I can say is Megan, good girl, run, run, run. <laughs> Run for your life because it could actually be your life. Welcome back. My view, my opinion, the MVMO podcast. I'm your host. Thank you for joining me for this episode. It's pretty quick. I just wanted to come on and give you guys uh, my updated commentary. Now that we have more information, the text messages were unsealed last week. Remember, uh, we had learned that there was some information about Jonathan that uh, uh, his legal team felt like uh, should it become public before they had chosen the jury members. This would sway anybody. They would have a very difficult time securing uh, fair and um, you know honest jury uh, members. We don't know if this was a smoking gun, but no doubt this was part of whatever the package of information was. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget to give me a big old thumbs up if you uh, enjoy hanging out and of course to comment and to subscribe. So now, as I said, we have more information. Let me tell you guys what I'm thinking now. You know, I am still rooting for Jonathan. That hasn't changed. Uh, In my view, my opinion, he's a young man in crisis. He is like so many young men, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Pakistani. It doesn't matter. Um, A lot of you like me, you've been in the trenches. You've been in the trenches of people's lives. And specifically myself, I was in the trenches for 18 years. And I actually continue to be in a tre- in the trenches just in a different way in my work that I do. And I will tell you, nobody got like this, you know, just because, you know, there's always a reason. And so I feel really bad for him. And I, I hope that he works it out. This We had learned that there was this cadre of information that Jonathan's attorneys did not want to become public before they had an opportunity to to secure uh, jurors for this jury trial. And uh, they had said, you know, we felt like this would sway, um, you know, anybody who hears this information, therefore making it almost impossible to be able to secure a fair jury. And so the judge approved that, right? And so we don't know if this right here, these un- unsealed text messages are the smoking gun or the smoking gun, but no doubt this was a part of it because this is damaging. Matter of fact, Forbes, Forbes magazine, guys, they have done this beautiful article. And I say beautiful because it was just so well researched and just good. But this beautiful article saying to the Marvel universe, all these people at Walt Disney, you got guys need to get rid of Jonathan Majors or at the very least choose somebody else to play Kang the Conqueror because you know that was kind of be his rising star in the Marvel Universe. So I'm not going to go through all the text messages but the, the long and the short as you probably have heard by now is that those text messages that were unsealed by his ex girlfriend's legal team um show that he was persuading her to not go get medical attention after an incident that left her with a head injury last year. So, okay, girl, 2022, remember what I was saying before? You know, if a woman came to me and said, okay, should I date a guy who has a history of being violent towards women? There was a time before being in the trenches where I would have said, absolutely not, you know, but experience makes you wiser. Working with people and understanding human nature makes you wiser. So what I would say and what I've said to you guys is, well, it depends. How long ago was this violent behavior? Was it just last year, girl? Because if so, run for your life, making, making, <laughs> making good. But if it was 15 years ago, okay, tell me, what can he show you? And it has to be proof. It can't just be, well, I just you know worked it out. What can he show you that he's done to change that? Because if somebody changed, they had to do something. You know, there was some action, a a consistent course of action that he or she took to bring about this change in their lives. Okay, was it therapy? Okay, was it uh, a support group? Okay, if so, what proof does he have? Okay, and does he mind you contacting somebody or several somebodies whose name is signed to that paper or the therapist? Will he sign a release of information? It's just that serious because violence could be your life. If a person hasn't changed, you can't take a chance on that. You can't say, well, you know, our love is special. Our love is different. Remember, ladies, we've already talked about that different mess. All of us are special. Yes, we are. I'm special. And so are you. But when it comes to a man's character, there's no such thing as a special woman. Okay, it doesn't exist. We, me, you, we don't have anything different than the last woman who we thought was fantastic. Okay, 
No, the love isn't different between me and him or you and him. In this case, Megan and him than this girlfriend. You see what I'm saying? There's no special woman like that. You know what I'm saying? There's no special love like that. It doesn't exist except in the movies and in our heads. Okay. And then I would ask the woman, okay, how long ago it was. Okay. What did he do to change? I'm talking about proof. Not that, like I said, words aren't proof. I need what words, where's the paper he showed you? Who did he talk to? Was it his pastor? Can you go to his pastor with him and talk and review some of the things they, that, that um, they talked about? And then the final thing was, okay, then you need to And if he doesn't give you permission, you need to run because that means he's lying. But then you need to be able to talk to people who've known him consistently for several years so that you can find out, has he really changed? Because people can go get therapy. People can read all kinds of books. People can talk to their pastor. They can go to all kinds of support groups. But I'm going to tell you something. That doesn't mean people have changed. And those of us who have been in the trenches, we know that. You know, people want to give themselves credit for doing those things. And that's great. But that's not all that that's required for change. It has to be now a period of consistent time that's passed to show they were in very tense uh, situations uh, where they, you know, didn't express a temper. And this was consistent over a long period of time because anybody can fake something for six months. All of us know that or we should. So. I was saying to you guys, you know, all of this stuff in essence, last time we talked, and I'll tell you, this was just last year, these text messages. So he hadn't changed. Even if he's gone to get therapy, he hadn't changed. That hasn't kind of, uh, you know, spiraled down to his behavior. It may all be in his head. So I now can say to you guys, I have no idea what Megan Good is doing. You know, I feel like some of the people I quoted to you uh, during our last conversation, they said, what the hell is Megan Good doing? And so now I'm going to say that after these text messages were released, proving he is not, not a man who used to be violent. He still is violent. So what the heck is she doing? You know what, guys, we don't know. We really don't know. We don't know if Megan is spiraling and this is this is one of those relationships. Uh, can some of you testify? I can. I've had times many, many years ago, but it still happened. You know, we can't say, oh, that was when I was in my 20s and 30s. You know, and so I'm, no, it's it was still me. <laughs> you know, it was still me, even though it was a long time ago. I had a period like that where it wasn't violent. The man had another issue, but I was spiraling in my own life. You know, some things had happened with my family and I was just like, toxic. And so he was who I went back to and I knew he was toxic. Okay. So it could be that it could be that she's going through one of those rebellious, what I call, you could call it toxic phases or rebellious phases where you just are just saying, you know what, God, I'm done with you. Okay. Not just you, but I'm done with this and that. So y'all know all of us have those periods. Hopefully as we get older, we have them no longer. But my point is this is now very confusing, you know, and I'm doing my best in my commentary to um, reserve, you know, sometimes we can think one thing, but then as more information comes out, we change. And, uh, so I will tell you, but I still feel sorry for him and I still wish the best for him. And I guess what I'm still rooting for him. So that hasn't changed because again, nobody got like this. There were a series of things that happened in his childhood that caused this. And every single one of us should have mercy, not just on his victims, but on him. Selective mercy is dangerous. It's very dangerous. And people who say have mercy on this one, but not that one, they have a problem. No mercy. What if God did that to us? I'll have mercy on this group over here, but not this group on the, on you, but not on them, on your daughter, but not on yours, right? We can't be that way. We have to work on ourselves and and understand that people who have problems, there's a reason why, just like when we had whatever problems we had, there was a reason And until we get that reason worked out, the problem is not going anywhere. It's just the way that it is, even if it lies dormant for years. So this was very damaging. And you know what, guys? I'm going to say this. He needs to go to jail. Yeah, he does. Remember, I told you guys that, you know, sometimes and, you know, we can all say that we shouldn't be this way. But this is just the way that is. There are some of us and I've been this way, too, (laughs) in various times where we aren't going to change until we just hit rock bottom. And then there are people and then some of us who will change just because we observed we needed to change. You get what I'm saying? But normally it takes us losing something, losing the person we love the most, losing a family member, some people losing a child, some people losing their marriage or losing their job. In his case, losing his career. So remember, we talked about many years ago, those of you who've been with me for years, 
uh, when we were in that other location on the internet that there's something called course corrections. So y'all remember that? We talked about course corrections. And um, there, you know, course corrections come about when something negative happens. But if we look at it the correct way, we'll see this is actually a positive. And yeah, we talked about it. It takes a lot of emotional growth to to view negative things or quote unquote failures or whatever label we could give them in life as positives, because on the surface, they don't look that way and they for sure don't feel good, do they? But this is good for him. This is a course correction for Jonathan Majors. Now, whether he will do what it takes to change so that maybe some years down the line, he can revive his career. He can, I don't know, whatever. Um, it's going to be up to him. But this is a major course correction. What would have happened had he had life, you know, because God loves all of us. We always get opportunities to change, don't we, y'all? Even if you don't believe in God, you have to. I think surely we can all say if we just look at life and look at the people we know and look at our own lives over a long period of time. When there were areas where we, we refused to change, there was always some big event, some embarrassing event then. Maybe not to this level, of course, but maybe in the family or, you know, the community or the church or the synagogue or the mosque where something was exposed or people found out. We sent the text message to the wrong person. You see, it could be on that level, too. And they were like, what? You know, so but we can say that we got an opportunity to either make a change or continue on the same path. And it seems to me this is what this is for him. What would have happened had life not given, had life not pulled the cover on this very destructive behavior? And he rose to the ranks and then he had, let's just say, he had a violent incident that was filmed on camera that he his ch child that he has and any future children will never live down because we understand that they say now we don't know what technology will exist tomorrow. OK, but for today, anything that's on the Internet is on the Internet. Right. And so what what if that would have happened? You, you know what I'm saying? And then there there'd be no way you could say this person is lying because we saw you punch her on on camera. They filmed the punching. You know, they filmed you kicking. They fil filmed you spitting, you know, whatever. So I would say that this actually, again, even though it doesn't look like it, is the grace and mercy of God for this guy to fix his problem. I mean, he's 34. What is it? 34, y'all? 36, something like that in his early 30s. And, um, you know. He, he's not going to make it out of this. And you know what? He shouldn't. He needs to go to jail for this. You know, beating somebody and then trying to convince them to not go get the needed medical care. That is. That is sadistic. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's it's not I don't want to say crazy because I'm trying I'm working on not using that word loosely. But this is just on a level that it's like, OK, this guy has some major psychological issues, too. It's not just maybe that he grew up in an abusive home and saw abuse and experienced abuse. And therefore, he has, you know, trauma and all these problems there. He seems to, based on what we're what's being revealed in this court case thus far, to have some major psychological issues. And of course, a trauma and abuse does that. It does change the chemical chemicals in our brain. I mean, we know that the science is there for that. Now, they have about a week and a half left of this trial, because remember, they the, the uh, prosecution has 14 witnesses, girl, that they're going to call. And I'm like, oh, gosh, <laughs> at first I'm like, hey, this is a pylon, which I still think this is a pylon. You don't need 14 witnesses for a misdemeanor. I mean, the girl's got her text messages. She's got video um, and all of that. Now, I will say that Grace Jabari, his girlfriend, she has not been cross examined yet. But you know what? Cross examined. You know, cross shamming the fact that this this text, these text messages alone has ended his career. Let's just say there were people who were being gracious to him before. And they said these companies or businesses, they said, OK, we'll hold off until the trial. Well, this right here, they don't need to hold off because it's very clear that he was telling her, don't go get medical help because you just don't know what they're going to do to me. And so it's just it's just a sad situation. A star was rising, but um, it needs to it needs to come down to earth and get some help before it can continue to rise. So those are my thoughts on the Jonathan Majors, Majors trial thus far with everything we know up to today, today being Monday, December 11th. Leave your thoughts below and I'll talk to you guys on the next broadcast.